So they just are literally trying to kill themselves all the time. So they're like, oh, what's this rubber object? Let me eat it uh, and die. And or like, hey, look, this cage is like five feet tall. I don't have a lot of depth perception. Let me just jump off of it. Hey guys, what's up? Today, we're talking about ferrets. Here with us is none other than Dr. Duke Tales. Where'd you get your name, Dr. Duke Tales? I guess so, from the word Duke. <laughs> Was it from Duke, the happy sound? It's the happy sound. So Duke is the happy sound and Tales is uh, like little ferret tails. But also, <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if you're familiar Duck. with the, the show Duck Tales. Duck Tales. Oh, yeah. Duck Tales. Woo. Yeah, of course. Oh, woo. <laughs> <laughs> woo there we go. Yeah, and I am Duck a doctor. Tales. So I am actually technically Dr. Duke Tales. Oh, wait, so you're an actual... I, I did that. You're, you're a vet. You're a vet? No, 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 no. No, no, I'm not a D, uh, DVM. I'm not a doctor of veterinary medicine, but I am a PhD. So... I am Dr. Duke Tales, and my research skills go towards researching ferrets and doing the best things I can for them. Yeah, so, uh, are they fun pets to keep? Like, um, who would you advise, like what kind of person would you advise to get a ferret as a pet? So, ferrets are really high maintenance, but they're really rewarding pets. So, if you don't have, um, a lot of time or patience, ferrets might not be for you. Um, so a lot of times I would recommend getting like a cat or a dog. Um, and they're very unusual, so their care is a little bit different than a cat or a dog. So you have to be willing to learn different things and willing to like adapt to being a ferret owner, basically. Um, also, they cost a lot of money. So they are technically in the United States considered exotic animals. So you can't really take them to a cat or a dog vet. You have to take them to an exotic animal vet. And a lot of vets here don't have a lot of experience with ferrets. So you actually have to do a lot of research and you have to make sure you live like 30 minutes between, like, like sorry, not between, but like uh, near a vet because when ferrets go downhill, their intestinal tract is only like four, like it takes about four hours for their um, food to travel through their stomach. So when they have issues, um, they could go downhill in a matter of four hours. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so they're very particular pets. Um, I don't, like a lot of people think they're small and they get lumped in the category of rodents. Um, cats have certain proclivities and they have a, maybe a certain type of injury that you see a lot. And so ferrets, they're the one kind of animal that doesn't really have like a, like a self-preservation mechanism. So they just are literally trying to kill themselves all the time. So they're like, oh, what's this rubber object? Let me eat it uh, and die. And or like, hey, look, this cage is like five feet tall. I don't have a lot of depth perception. Let me just jump off of it. So I feel like ferret owners are constantly trying to protect their animals where cats are fairly self-sufficient. Um, and so with ferrets, if they do jump off something, even from a, a like a foot range of like three feet, they can get internal bleeding and <laughs> and they can get um, like uh, internal uh, damage basically. So there's a lot of different kinds of um, diseases that affect them and also a lot of cancers because they're pretty inbred here in the United States. We have a lot of mills that are... Can they get? Oh, sorry. Can ferrets get COVID? Is that? So, <laughs> yeah, actually. Um, yeah. So, uh, there's not enough research out there right now to actually like give a good, uh, really thorough answer to this. But the answer is yes. But the um, the general uh, advice is it's not anything serious right now. So ferrets are uh, susceptible to uh, various. Um, diseases uh, that humans are. So they actually use them for flu testing. So the flu vaccines are actually tested on ferrets because they have something called an ACE2 receptor, um, like humans have. So they have a similar kind of uh, makeup to humans. So that's that's why they use them for testing. Um, so the MERS and the SARS virus, um, which are <sighs> related to COVID. Um, so the SAR, like I believe the SARS virus was actually, um, kind of affected ferrets a little bit more than MERS did not. And then this is actually the SARS-2 virus. And so we were actually originally very worried about this affecting ferrets in a very negative way. And it looks like through studies that it kind of gives like a similar, um, a similar kind of thing to humans. So what it does, but, but not to a dangerous extent. So a ferret can get lethargic with COVID. It can have a temperature and it can be um, basically, you just have to make sure it's got fluids um, for the two weeks. But a lot of times, like there's no, the so far as of now, um, and these things can all change because science is like a constantly evolving uh, thing, especially since we don't know much about it right now. Yeah. 
Um, but basically, uh, yes, they can get it. Is it lethal? Not really. You just kind of have to do a little bit of supportive care in case it does happen. And we basically use a flu protocol because the ferrets can get flu from the human, from humans. So if I was sick, I could give my ferret the flu. And so what we do is just uh, make sure you wash your hands when you have to feed them, see if someone else can take care of them kind of situation. So we just do the flu protocol just to prevent any kind of thing that happens because we don't know enough right now.